The killing of Palestinian civilians is not a collateral effect of the war. This Israeli assault relies by design on mass and indiscriminate killing of civilians. The humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza is not the consequence of a war. It is a tool employed by Israel to pressure people and force them out. The famine underway is not an undesired outcome of the war. It is starvation as a method of war. The collapse of the health system is not an unforeseen result of a war. It is the result of premeditated attacks against hospitals and medical personnel. The indiscriminate killing, the mass arrest, film humiliation of Palestinians, enforced disappearance and abduction, and summary executions aim at terrorizing the Palestinian people as a whole. This is an assault by atrocities, a full-fledged assault on 2.3 million Palestinians, besieged, bombarded, displaced, starved. For over 80 days now, 2.3 million Palestinians have been fighting for their life. From dawn till dusk, from dusk till dawn. Every single day for 80 days. There is undeniable evidence, multiple confessions of the criminal nature of this assault and of its criminal objectives, the destruction of a people to force their displacement. This is why peoples around the world, states across the globe, moral voices are expressing outrage and calling for an end to the massacres. Mr. President, what do you say on behalf of a people enduring a genocide? On behalf of a people blamed for their own deaths by those killing them, <coughs> blamed for the oppression they are subjected to by those occupying them, on behalf of a people facing an existential threat while those responsible for this threat insist it is their survival that is at stake. No one can predict the next chapter of this tragedy, but everyone knows it will be worse. As the world welcomes a new year, the massacres in Palestine continue, the injustice continues, the suffering continues. How many Palestinian generations will have to suffer? The United States shares the concern <clears throat> regarding the sharp increase in violence by extremist settlers in the West Bank and the unprecedented number of Palestinian fatalities both there and in Gaza over the last three months. Colleagues, we know 2023 has been the deadliest year for the Palestinians in the West Bank. As we have said repeatedly, the death of any civilian whether they were one of the individuals killed by Hamas terrorists on October 7th in Israel, or one of the Palestinians killed in the West Bank or Gaza, is a tragedy, period. The United States continues to stress to the Israeli government the importance of preventing extremist settler violence, as well as investigating the and holding accountable those who commit acts of violence. To that end, the United States will continue to implement visa restrictions as announced on December 5th, targeting individuals believed to have been involved in or meaningfully contributed to undermining peace, security, or stability in the West Bank. And we have already taken steps to impose visa restrictions on dozens of individuals under this policy. These restrictions reinforce the United States' long-held belief Advancing settlements in the West Bank undermines the prospects of a future Palestinian state and a two-state solution. As do any actions that undermine stability in the West Bank, including attacks by Israel, Israeli settlers against Palestinians and Palestinian attacks against Israelis. As President Biden has repeatedly said, those attacks are unacceptable. Let us be clear, a two-state solution where Israelis and Palestinians live side by side in peace is the path to peace. That path to peace is not a smooth nor a fast one. And the ongoing construction of settlements and increase in violence in the West Bank makes this challenging journey 
even more difficult. In addition, we also know the continued control of Gaza by Hamas, a group that has dedicated its entire existence to the elimination of Israel, precludes a pathway to a viable two-state solution in which Israel's security is guaranteed and the Palestinian people can fully realize their aspirations. Colleagues, as we work toward a lasting peace, we must all continue to call out and condemn dehumanizing dehuman, hum, rhetoric which persists at alarming levels on all sides. There can be no justification for terrorism or attacks on civilians, and we condemn horrific Hamas's glorification of violence. And yet, some members of this council cannot bring themselves to condemn Hamas's brutal terrorist attacks on October 7th. It's outrageous and beneath the dignity of this council. Moreover, it is striking that even as, again, we hear many countries urging the end to this conflict, which we would all like to see, we hear very few demands of Hamas to stop hiding behind civilians, lay down its arms, and surrender. How can it be we hear so few demands directed at Hamas? The United States reiterates regional actors should not seek to widen this conflict. We join other members of the Security Council in condemning the Houthis' attack on commercial shipping vessels in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. We call for this council to speak out and take action against these attacks without delay. We are also concerned by the renewed violence along the border between Israel and Lebanon and underscore to both governments the need to address the situation through diplomacy rather than force. We are following with concern the situation in the West Bank, which continues to be very tense, and where against the background of the bloody operation by Israel in Gaza, we're seeing continued uh, continued operations by Israeli security forces and by violent settlers, which not only threaten with the large-scale humanitarian uh, disaster, but also to spread the crisis to the rest of the region. Uh, Lebanon and Syria find themselves uh, under threat. In addition to that, uh, 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 increasing tensions are seen in Iraq and Yemen, whereas Egypt and Jordan are facing unprecedented risks of a massive exodus of uh, Palestinians from Gaza and from the West Bank. Mr. President, according to UN uh, statistics, uh, since the 7th of October in the West Bank, including in East Jerusalem, Israeli military and, and, and settlers have killed 302 Palestinians, including 79 children. That's 60% of all Palestinians killed on uh, uh, the West Bank this year. Overall, their numbers reached 504 people, so that 2023 was the bloodiest year for the inhabitants of the West Bank. The number of the wounded as a result of the actions of uh, the Israeli military and uh, settlers uh, are uh, slightly less than 4,000 Palestinians, including 576 children. In the context of violence in the West Bank, we'd like to, as an aside, stress the fact that the uh, the multiple security operations by Israel on this part of uh, occupied territory began long before the terrorist attack of the 7th of October, and which, I once again, that terrorist attack, I want to stress once again, we categorically condemn. And these raids began without any linkage to the terrorist threat uh, uh, which uh, the, uh, the Israelis have used as a justification to conduct uh, an unprecedented in its scale uh, an operation to clean up Gaza, which has led to over 21,000 killed, uh, and uh, including 144 UN staff members, including staff members of UNRWA, and others. Uh, in addition to that, 100, 311 medical workers and 103 journalists have become uh, victims. Against that background, we're seeing confiscation of the property of Palestinians and demolition of homes. And, the, uh, and there are still uh, resolutions 2334 is being violated, and uh, settlers are being expanded in, in Jerusalem. Uh, 
Mr. President, our uh, most urgent task is to stop the bloodshed and ensure conditions for providing humanitarian assistance to all those uh, in need on occupied Palestinian territories. Unfortunately, our multiple efforts together with like-minded member states to uh, have the Security Council adopt a resolution with a, a, a demand of an immediate comprehensive ceasefire, even for humanitarian purposes, are met with harsh opposition by the, from the United States. Such a policy uh, by Washington derives from its one-sided and selfish position aimed at derailing the Middle East peace process and cover up any actions by their regional ally Israel. In essence, the United States today uh, remain the only state in the world other than Israel opposing the international consensus about the fact that there is no alternative to humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. As a result, since the beginning of the crisis, the Council has only adopted two resolutions emasculated by Washington and toothless, resolutions 2712 and 2720, which lack any uh, direct demands uh, addressed to uh, uh, ceasefire, and this has been something that has been demanded by leaders of all international humanitarian agencies, including the Secretary General. The relevant language in these resolutions, even at the negotiating stage, has been categorically excised by the United States. Uh, the U.S. delegation accepted that only language weakened as much as possible, which it will in no way prevent the continuation of the military operation by Israel. As a result, exclusively uh, as, as a result of U.S. position, uh, the Security Council, as the main U.N. organ to maintain international peace and security, hasn't been able to fulfill its direct mandate for three months now. This kind of unaccepted situation highlights the obvious double standards of our American colleagues colleagues with regard to the crisis in Gaza and other regions of the world. The Russian Federation abstained in uh, 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 voting on both resolutions as a reaction to the appeals of the Palestinian and Arab representatives. At the same time, we value our historically close relationships both with Palestinians and with Israelis, and we'd like to confirm our unchanged approaches. We, con we condemn the terrorist attack against Israel of the 7th of October, which nevertheless should not and cannot serve as justification for the continued collective punishment of peaceful Palestinians.